Welcome back to part two of the Trudon 2.0 Beginner's Guide. In fact, this is the ninth installment in the long running Trudon franchise, but part two of the Beginner's Guide mini series. We've covered a lot of material so far, so if you want to catch up on the series, check out the earlier videos in the playlist. In the last video, we unboxed and assembled the printer. Taking our time along the way to do some preventative maintenance and ending off with the first power up. In this video, we'll be going over the firmware configuration, slicer setup, and initial calibrations. This printer ships with RepRap firmware and Duet web control. If you'd prefer to convert the machine to Clipper, you can follow my video guide and reference the resources on my GitHub page. For now, let's take a look at RepRap, which is also a very capable firmware. We'll first need to connect the printer to Wi-Fi so we can access the web interface. Take the supplied SD card and insert it into your computer. Edit the configure Wi-Fi G code file to include your network credentials, then insert the card back to your printer and run the file. Wait a few minutes, then check the about section for the assigned IP address. If you don't get one, you may need to reset the Wi-Fi module. In this case, check the link in the description for further instructions. If all goes well, you can then access the web interface by typing the IP address into a web browser. The next step will be to update the firmware and system files to the latest versions. For this process, we'll be referencing the resources provided by Team Gloomy. Team Gloomy is to RepRap firmware what Kevin O'Connor is to Clipper. They develop and maintain the firmware for our convenience, so we can just enjoy printing. But Team Gloomy has taken it a step further with this printer, providing a full wiki with tutorials, printer profiles, and other great resources. This is where we'll be starting today. The first step will be to update the firmware itself. We'll follow this link to download the latest version and locate the file that corresponds to the chipset on the Trudon's motherboard. Specifically, we'll want the STM32F4-Wi-Fi firmware file. We can then upload the .bin file to the web interface via the machine tab. We'll also want to update Duet Web Control. You can download the latest version from the link in the description and upload it with the Upload System Files button within the system menu. Next, we'll visit the Trudon V2 repository on Team Gloomy's GitHub page. Download the latest set of configuration files and upload them to the printer using the same procedure as before. This will override the factory settings and macros, replacing them with improved versions. Team Gloomy has done a lot of work refining these files, making improvements to the gantry leveling procedure, homing sequence, bed probing, Z offset, start G code, jerk speed, motor current, coordinate system orientation, fan logic, and well, you get the point. Don't be alarmed if the case light doesn't come back on after uploading these files and rebooting. The behavior has been changed to only turn on the light during printing. The only file that won't get replaced in this update procedure is the one called config-override, which stores information like your PID tuning parameters and your Z offset. We'll need to open this file and delete the two G31 lines. The first of which specifies the Z offset between nozzle and probe, and the second of which specifies the offset between nozzle and Z end stop pin. All of the content in this file is auto-generated. These lines will be regenerated after we configure the new Z offset. Speaking of which, let's do that now. The improved configuration includes two convenient macros for setting the Z offset parameters. We'll run them in sequence, starting with the one called probe trigger height. This will initiate a calibration sequence, which will require us to jog the nozzle towards the bed until it lightly drags on a piece of paper, at which point we'll accept the result. We've now calibrated the offset between the nozzle and the probe. We'll then run the macro called Auto Z Trigger Height. This process here is identical, but this time we're calibrating the offset between the nozzle and the Z end stop pin. The first time you print, you'll likely need to fine tune the Z offset using the baby stepping controls in the web interface. Once you're happy with the first layer squish, use the save baby step macro to automatically update the Z offset saved in the config override. Next, we'll run a PID auto tune on the bed and the hot end by pasting the indicated commands into the console. After completion, send M500 to save the values to the config-override file. Also included in the Team Gloomy configuration is a plugin called Button Command. This provides a modular set of control panels that can be used to control various aspects of the printer's runtime behavior. From within this interface, we can override things like the slicer specified bed temperature, the nozzle diameter, and the duration of heat soaking pre-print, all without needing to modify the G-code or reslice the file. 
In order to install the plugin, we'll first download it from GitHub, then upload it to the web interface. There are two versions of the plugin, so make sure you select the one that corresponds to the current version of firmware you're running. For instance, I'm running 3.4.5. So I need button command 0.10.15. After the plugin is installed, you'll need to enable it by clicking the start button in the external plugins menu. You should then have a new button command entry under the controls section of the web interface. Click into it, then follow the steps on screen to upload the pre-configured panel layout, which can be downloaded from the Team Gloomy GitHub. With that done, you should have a new tab called print control. These controls will revert to the preset states anytime the printer is rebooted. If you'd like to override the defaults, you can do so within the globals.g file under the system menu. If you'd like to add your own controls, you can do that here too, using one of the existing ones as a template. For instance, I added toggle control for bed leveling, so the mesh can be selectively regenerated pre-print. All right, with all of that out of the way, we're almost ready for our first test print. For this, we'll first need to slice a file and this will require a suitable printer profile for this machine. For your convenience, I have created a set of machine profiles in Orca Slicer for the Trudon 2.0, one for RepRap firmware and the other for Clipper. As of version 1.6.3, these will be integrated into the main Orca Slicer build. These are, for the most part, just a skin version of the Voron 2.4 profiles. The Trudon may have inherited most of the design from the Voron, but since then it has taken on its own identity with a budding community growing up around it. So I thought that should be reflected in the slicer. By the way, if you want to support the work I do, please consider joining me on Patreon. I post lots of great resources there that are highly valuable for owners of this machine. I'm also developing a catalog of awesome models for your printing pleasure. So if you're interested, check it out at the link in the description. We'll first slice this simple test cube and send it to the printer to verify the base functionality. I would then suggest printing off a series of ringing test towers. I have a whole video dedicated to that process, so I won't rehash it here, but I would suggest you give it a watch. Worth noting here is that the acceleration values are set rather low in the firmware. 2000 millimeters per second squared, as compared to the stock value of 5000 in Clipper firmware. After determining the optimal combination of shaping function and frequency and adding it to your config.g, I would suggest printing an acceleration test tower. Choose the maximum acceleration for which the ringing is still under control and update your config.g accordingly. The next test that is worth conducting is maximum flow rate. This will tell you the maximum throughput of your hot end. For PLA, it should be around 10 cubic millimeters per second on the stock hot end, which is a clone V6. There is a convenient built-in calibration model for max flow rate in Orca Slicer. After printing, you can correlate the point at which the extrusion quality degrades to the maximum flow rate, knowing that the tower increments by 0.5 cubic millimeters every 5 millimeters. Input the measured value into a filament-specific profile and rest easy knowing you'll never experience under extrusion due to an insufficient rate of melting. Another good calibration to run would be pressure advance, which can be calibrated using a tower. After printing, mark the height at which the seam looks best. Measure it with a ruler and multiply the value in millimeters by 0.002. This value can be saved in the filament specific G code in your slicer, or if you want to use a single global value, you can replace the value in config.g. In general, this should be configured on a per filament basis. Besides these, you may wish to do further calibrations and tuning by following Ellis's tuning guide, which is very comprehensive. For the most part, you should get good print quality with a few basic calibrations. Okay, I think that's it. Your Trudon 2.0 is officially ready for prime time. As you begin to use the printer, you may notice a few things that you wish to improve. At face value, this Trudon may seem less moddable than a Voron, but trust me when I tell you that there are plenty of retrofits that would be viable for this machine. In fact, this will be the topic of the next few installments in this series. So make sure you get subscribed and stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.